From NBC Bay Area, median price of a Bay Area home up 15% from a year ago. So I don't know what the hell is actually going on because I think there's some other reports about how the housing market in San Francisco is completely collapsing. So who knows? But I do know they want to make the state uninhabitable for anybody who's not a junkie self-vaccinating under the Bay Bridge or a politician. There's no room for anybody in between. But my name is Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. It costs nothing for you, and it helps me a lot because the algorithm is an absolute monster. But if you want to help me even more and spend a little bit of money, go ahead and buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. But I'm constantly talking about Oakland and San Francisco and the Bay Area at large, really. But it's mostly crime. And we all know about the rising prices, the minimum wage hike that is putting restaurants out of business left and right. So we know this. But when you put them all side by side, it becomes really quite jarring. Those trying to buy a home, new data shows the median price of a home in the Bay Area is up significantly from a year ago. According to the California Association of Realtors, the median price of a home in March was nearly $1.4 million. That's up more than 15% from the same time a year ago. It's even higher in some counties. The median home in San Mateo County is $2.1 million, up 17% from last year. Marin County, nearly $2 million, up 22%. Santa Clara County, $1.9 million, that's up 17% from this time last year. All this despite mortgage rates still hovering around 7%. The main reason prices are going up, competition is high. Not a lot of housing on the market and people want to get into a new home. They're done waiting to see if interest rates will go down. Financial website Bankrate confirms renting is now cheaper than buying in the country's largest metro areas. Bad news for them. Okay, so it's cheaper to rent than buy, which they are likely doing on purpose to create an entire population of forever renters. Forever. Forever. Forever that will have no problem living in the pod and eating the bugs. But if the crime wasn't enough, if the home prices weren't enough, there's also, of course, the gas prices. Over $7 for a gallon of gas. That's how much a Menlo Park gas station is charging. Let me show you exact numbers here. $7.09 for regular gas, seven forty-five dollars for plus, and seven sixty-nine dollars for supreme. That's at least $1 more than nearby gas stations are charging. And, and when you, if you cross over the California border right into Arizona, the gas drops almost a full dollar well above the state average of $5.42. So what's going on? AAA says gas stations set their own prices and a lot actually depends on when they buy their gas. If their parent company or the individual gas station the buys taxes, their gas wholesale. When, the gas taxes, right? I think we all know that there's a weird gas tax in California. So they hike it in the summer so we can have cleaner green energy. And there's a 50% or, or, or no, no, not 50%, a 50 cent or 60 cent, maybe, I think it's actually 59 cents uh, per gallon tax on the gas. But they're not going to mention that, I don't think. Well, when oil is really expensive and gas is really expensive, they're going to have to sell it at that price um, in order to make a profit. AAA is attributing high gas prices to these three reasons. High demand, the cost of summer grade gas, and the price of oil. And no mention of the tax increase. If you're searching for the cheapest gas, watch Today in the Bay. Our Mike Inouye is tracking the lowest price per gallon in the Bay Area. Absolutely insane. So, crime, home prices, gas prices, electricity prices. PG&E. Uh, has always been good at engineering equipment, but not necessarily engineering how we do the work. We're redoing how we do the work, and we're saving. Is this the best? Is this the best they have? This lady is going to bat for PG&E, which has been pretty uh, unsavory for several decades now, to my recollection. Customers dollars by doing that. Let me give you some examples. Well, hold on, I have to jump in. You say you're saving customers dollars. I don't see it. We don't see it. For the last five years, our rates have gone up double, 100%. And I get it in 10 years from now, perhaps that's the truth. But right now, no one's saving any money. In fact, it's costing us more. I think what customers can't see 
is all of the cost savings that we are putting into the system while we they can't see it because it doesn't exist you're it's like they're selling solar which i guess they kind of are right well yeah it's going to cost you sixty thousand dollars now but you're going to save that sixty thousand dollars over 30 years are rebuilding it when do we see when do we benefit from that we are forecasting prices falling in 25 and again in 20 we are forecasting means i'm going to say that, that now but i can almost guarantee that in the next few years they're not going to go down at all and it won't matter nobody's going to follow up on this lady nobody's going to talk to her 2026 one of the things absolutely crazy so home prices gas prices electricity prices of course the crime still through the roof but also internet is about to become a lot more expensive for millions of Californians. April is the last fully funded month for a popular federal program that gives $30 discounts for internet access. Thousands of Oakland residents were signed up. So we subsidized the internet, but that's gonna run out as I guess it was supposed to, but I can only assume they are going to try to keep that going as long as humanly possible. And then, of course, the restaurant prices are also going to go up. you gotten your bill after dinner and gotten sticker shock? Well, soon that'll be a thing of the past. California Attorney General Rob Bonta has ruled that the ban on hidden... Rob Bonta is completely uh, is a weirdo, compromised scumbag at his best. ...fees for hotels, concerts, and sports tickets approved last year also now applies to restaurants. So restaurant owners will no longer be allowed to add what lawmakers call junk fees for things like health care for employees higher wages, or COVID fees. Or COVID fees? You guys made those fees, and now you're trying to ban them, and I guess there's some people who are actually believing this stuff? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be any cheaper to go out to eat. Restaurant owners will now just have to include those fees to their prices on their menus, something restaurant owners say can hurt their business. Will that being up front and center cause people to dine out less? And if people continue to dine out less, um, we, we do have a struggling restaurant industry. The new law goes into effect on July 1st. What do you guys think? Of course, right? I mean, they, they create these fees, they create these exorbitant costs, and then try to ban them and tell you they're the ones actually helping, right? And we see it. So on top of the minimum wage hike, they also have to deal with this where they forced restaurants to pay for, you know, health care and all these weirdo fees and then ban that. And uh, along those same lines with the quote unquote junk fees, assembly bill takes aim at Ticketmaster, looks to instill competition in ticket market. So the government is going to come over the top and try to lower the prices once again, which I don't know the ins and outs of, but I can almost be sure that it's not going to help anybody. It never does. AGO in San Francisco has more with reaction from people. Dressing up for a big concert or wearing your favorite team's gear. Live events are supposed to be so much fun, but attending one is not cheap and lawmakers say they're getting more expensive. Since Ticketmaster and Live Nation were allowed to merge in 2010, ticket prices have gone up an astronomical 140 percent okay Lower prices for yeah and the price of everything else has also gone up and somehow some way they're still tricking people into believing that they are going to help lower the cost of these ticket prices it, it doesn't make any sense and it's not even worth watching because we know that whenever the government especially in california tries to come over the top and regulate something it only makes it worse we, we remember when they took cannabis from medical. Oh, doc, I had a football injury in high school. You can tell that to a doctor over Zoom or a Doc Dorb, as I, as I like to call them. You tried the best, now try the rest. Call 1-600-DOCTORB. The B is for bargain. And they regulated so many businesses. Uh, they, they regulated them out of business, I should say. And they were also dealing with the crime. And I know from experience that there is a cannabis dispensary in San Francisco where I recorded a guy going absolutely crazy, strung out on some type of drugs.
fucking nigga. I thought you said, me. hey, bro. Ooh. Fuck! Fuck! And then that very business closed like a month later. But with all that said, on the plus side, as California might say, well, no, I guess California would say on the downside, the pot prices are dropping. So while everything else, all the prices across the board pretty much are going through the roof, what is dropping? Weed prices. I wonder why. 